Welcome to this on-demand session on data-driven instruction. The phrase data-driven instruction gets thrown around a lot these days, so much that it can lose its meaning. In the next few minutes, we're going to look at the research behind data-driven instruction, some data collection methods, and the ways this data can be applied in the classroom. Data is everywhere. I'm sure that if we had time and space, we could come up with dozens of data collection methods. Far more than just test results, data can be collected from nearly every classroom interaction if we choose to do so. So when we talk about data-driven instruction, it's not just a box to tick on an annual review. It's a whole approach to teaching. If data helps you understand your students with maximum accuracy. Students come to the classroom with their own preconceptions about how the world works. It's up to teachers to discern what and how much they already know what misconceptions they may hold, and how to help them connect their existing knowledge to new concepts or skills. So if learning belongs to the learner, we need data to most precisely know our learners and give them ownership of their learning. Generally speaking, we collect this data in one of three ways, before we teach, after we teach, and while we teach. The diagnostic assessment is used before we teach, so we know what the students know and can plan accordingly. Summative assessments are used after we teach, so we can see if students have mastered the contents and skills we've learned in class. We use formative assessments while we teach to monitor students' progress throughout the learning process. Data provided by formative assessments allows us to adjust instruction to meet the needs of all learners. We're going to focus on formative assessment here, since it's the backbone of differentiated instruction. This is an example of an easy to use formative assessment, something that might help students reflect on their test performance, for example. For each question on the task, students should reflect on whether or not the question was challenging or difficult and how they figured out the answer. The assessment provides data on student confidence with both the test's content and its question types. It also helps you to see when and why the students get stuck and the thinking behind their errors so that you can better diagnose their problems and reteach. Let's look at another example. This is a typical task for a science classroom, something that could be given as a homework assignment or a project-based assessment. Used as a formative assessment, the task provides data on student mastery of the scientific method. The data can then be used to identify varied levels of understanding within the class and that can then inform future grouping plans. Let's look at another very different example. This simple fill in the blank task is just the sort of assessment you might give at the beginning of a lesson to activate prior knowledge and prepare students for learning. The task gives a snapshot view of student mastery of monetary math, decimal placement, and variable expressions, all requisite prior knowledge for the lesson. Teachers who use data to adapt their instruction could use this task to pair struggling students with more advanced peers. Let's look at one last example. This assessment is one of the most common used in classrooms because it's based on a simple observation. Left as an observation, though, it's difficult to look for trends and really use the data as data. Using group work situations as an opportunity for data collection requires some preparation. In this example, the teacher will use observation to collect data on both content mastery and social skills. When conducting an observation, teachers first need to think about what kind of data they want to collect from the observation. In fact, knowing what you want to know really ought to guide all of your formative assessments. Let's look at some examples of this. Probably the most common knowledge teachers are after is whether or not students have mastered the lesson objectives. There are many ways to decide if students understood the lesson content, and no one way is the right way. Using exit slips, homework, and later class content to evaluate immediate understanding and retention are all reliable methods of capturing this kind of data. Sometimes you want to know if students are missing basic skills that you think are essential to success in class like note-taking. Again, there are lots of ways to collect data on students' note-taking ability. 
One idea of a simple way to collect anecdotal records is shown here. It simplifies and quantifies tracking of the most important or relevant student traits and can be simply transferred to a spreadsheet for easy sorting and growth tracking. In other situations, teachers need data that's a little more complex. Simple observation or exit slips alone won't yield the answer to a question about why students are struggling with a particular text. For this data, a teacher needs some non-traditional, more time-intensive methods. Putting the vocabulary into a different, less complex setting, for example, might yield crucial data to help the teacher modify instruction for mastery. In this final example, the data in question is less clear cut than content mastery. It seeks to better understand student interest in order to prepare engaging content in an upcoming unit. And while any of these data collection techniques is worthwhile, the ranking questionnaire you see here is a nice way to narrow student choices so their responses are maximally useful. Now, once you've got all of this formative assessment data, what do you do with it? Data can tell you so much. It can tell you not only what students know, but what instructional strategies are successful in your class, how your students learn best, and what misconceptions they may hold. In order to obtain everything your data has to offer, though, you can't rely on a single test report. You need a variety of data points, collected in response to questions that directly impact students' learning. This is the kind of data that has the potential to impact your instructional choices immediately. Reflect on your formative assessment choices for just a moment, and we hope you can use some of the ideas we shared in this on-demand session. Thanks so much for listening.